We're going to look at solving a pair of simultaneous equations where one of the equations is linear and one of the equations is quadratic. Now, a linear equation is one which looks something like ax plus by equals c. In other words, x has a single power, y has a single power, there's a number. And if you were to sketch an equation which looked like that, it would give you some sort of straight line, which is why it's called a linear equation. A quadratic equation is one where there is a squared term. So a quadratic might be something like ax squared plus by equals c. So here the x term is squared, which makes it into a quadratic equation. If you were to sketch a quadratic, then it ends up looking in some form a bit like a u, which is called a parabola. Now, if you think about it, if you have a curve and a straight line on the same graph, then they will generally cross in two places. So when you are trying to solve a pair of equations where one is linear and one is quadratic, you usually get two pairs of values. One pair of x and y values, for example, would give you that point, and the other pair of x and y values would give you that point. So as an example, let's consider this pair of equations. The linear equation is y equals x plus 2. So that tells us that the value of y and the value of x plus 2 are the same. And the quadratic equation is x squared plus 5y equals 4. So I'm going to use the method of substitution and I'm going to substitute into equation 2 the equivalent value for y from equation 1. So I will have x squared plus 5 lots of y and in equation 1 I know that y is equal to x plus 2. So instead of y, I'm going to write x plus 2. And looking back at equation 2, I know that's got to be equal to 4. So by that substitution, I've achieved one equation, all just in the one unknown, x. So to solve this, I'm going to multiply out the bracket. x squared plus 5x plus 10 equals 4. This is now a quadratic equation, so to solve it, I need the right-hand side to be 0. So I'm going to take 4 away from both sides. x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 0. Hopefully it will factorise, so I'm going to put it into two brackets. They will both start with x, and I need two numbers that will multiply to give me the 6, and that will add to give me the 5. So it's going to be x plus 3 in one bracket and x plus 2 in the other bracket. Just a quick check. There's your x squared. 3 times 2 is 6. And then 3x plus 2x gives you your 5x. So either the first bracket is 0, x plus 3 equals 0, x equals minus 3. Or the second bracket is 0, x plus 2 equals 0 x equals minus 2. And then, having got the two values of x, I need to find the equivalent value of y. And the easiest way to do it is to use equation 1. So I'm going to put these values into equation 1. So when x equals minus 3, y is equal to minus 3 plus 2, which is minus 1. So one solution is x equals minus 3, y equals minus 1. Then the same thing again, except this time I'm going to use the value of minus 2. So when x is minus 2, y is equal to minus 2 plus 2, which is 0. So my second pair is x equals minus 2, y equals 0. And as I said at the beginning, two pairs of values to solve this pair of simultaneous equation. Sometimes it's necessary to do a bit of rearranging of the original equations before you can get to the stage of substituting. So suppose we have 
y minus x equals 2 as our first equation and y minus 2x equals x squared as our second equation. If you look at the linear equation, neither the y nor x is there as a subject. So I'm going to rearrange it to make y the subject, which means I have to add x to both sides. So y is equal to 2 plus x. So that's now my first equation. My second equation, I'm going to leave as it is for the time being because I can substitute quite easily into that. So that's my second equation. So using the fact that I know that y is equal to 2 plus x and substituting that in the second equation, I get 2 plus x, substituting for y, minus the 2x, which is still there, is equal to x squared. A little bit of sorting out and rearranging. x minus 2x is minus x. So 2 minus x equals x squared. Now, as it's a quadratic, I need to make one side 0. And I'm going to choose to make the left-hand side 0 so I can keep my x squared term positive. So I will start by adding x to both sides. So 2 is equal to x squared plus x. Then take 2 away from both sides. So 0 is equal to x squared plus x minus 2. And now we have the standard form of a quadratic equation. So I can factorise it into two brackets. So I will have the two brackets x plus 2 and x minus 1. And if you check, x times x is x squared. 2 times minus 1 gives me the minus 2. And then 2x, take away x, gives me the plus x. So the factorisation is fine. So I either have that the first bracket, x plus 2 is 0. So one value of x is minus 2. Or the second bracket, x minus 1 is 0. So the second value of x is x equals 1. I'm now I'm going to take each of those values in turn and put them into one of the original equations. And I'm going to put it into the rewritten form of equation 1. So when x is minus 2, I get that y is equal to 2 plus x and x is minus 2. 2 plus minus 2 equals 0. So my first pair of values is x equals minus 2 and y equals 0. Then I take the value of x to be 1. Again, putting it in the rewritten form of equation 1. y is equal to 2 plus the value of x, which is 1. So y is equal to 3. So my second pair of values is x equals 1 and y equals 3. And there we have, as before, two sets of, of answers for this pair of equations. Right, another example, slightly harder again, more work to do, but the method and the idea are pretty similar. So my first equation this time, my linear equation is x plus 2y equals 3 and my quadratic equation is x squared plus y squared equals 5. So we have two problems this time. In the first equation there isn't an obvious subject. We've got x plus 2y both on the same side. In my second equation both the x squared and the y squared are are squared terms. So I'm going to have quite a lot of substitution and manipulation to do. Now, with the first equation, I have to choose which letter I'm going to make the subject. And I'm going to choose to make x the subject this time because the y has a coefficient of 2, which will just complicate things a little bit. So I'm going to make x the subject. And in order to do that, I need to take 2y away from both sides. So x is equal to 3 minus 2y. So having now got x as the subject, I can now substitute this into equation 2. So if you look at equation 2, the first bit is x squared, but x I know 
is 3 minus 2y. So it's 3 minus 2y squared plus the y squared, which is already there, is equal to 5. So the difficult new stage this time is that I now have to square out a bracket. And I'm just going to do this on one side because 3 minus 2y all squared means you have got to multiply the whole bracket 3 minus 2y by itself. So it's 3 minus 2y multiplied by 3 minus 2y. So 3 times 3 is 9. Minus 2y times minus 2y is plus 4y squared. And then we have minus 6y from there and minus 6y from there, which we shall simplify a little bit, will give me 4y squared minus 12y plus 9. So going back up to my working, I, had, I now know what happens when you expand out that bracket. So the 3 minus 2y all squared becomes 4y squared minus 12y plus 9, and then I have that y squared still, so plus y squared, and that's equal to 5. So simplifying this, I've got 4y squared plus y squared, which is 5y squared, minus 12y, and then I'm going to take 5 away from both sides, so the right-hand side will be 0, 9 take away 5 is 4, and that's equal to 0 quadratic equation, going to put it into two brackets and the two brackets will be 5y minus 2 and y minus 2. There are several methods of doing that factorisation which are dealt with in earlier videos. Just a quick check, 5y times y is 5y squared, minus 2 times minus 2 is plus 4, and then you have minus 10y and minus 2y is minus 12y. So our two values of y, either 5y minus 2 equals 0, which means that y is equal to 2 fifths, or y minus 2 equals 0, which means y is equal to 2. I now have two y values and I have to find the equivalent values of x and I'm using the rearranged version of equation 1. So I'm using the fact that x is equal to 3 minus 2y. So when y is equal to 2 fifths, x is equal to 3 minus 2 lots of 2 fifths, which is 4 fifths. So x is equal to 2 and 1 fifth and then if y is equal to 2 if y is equal to 2 x is equal to 3 minus 2 lots of 2 so it's 3 minus 4 which is minus 1 so one pair of values will be x equals 2 and a fifth y equals 2 fifths and the other pair of values is x equals minus 1, y equals 2.